Darren? Hi, Darren. Darren, Darren, Darren. Darren, Darren, who's hosting us? Uh, Maubane, we are there. Hello, Che. Hello, Che. Yes, we can start there, Che. We, can we start? Yes. Mr. Maubane. Hello, hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, oral members. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. On the, on the platform. Honorable uh, uh, Maria, I see you. Good morning. Um, Mr. Maubane, can we start? I, I don't know where they're in the, Mr. Yes, Mawane. yes, we can. Yeah, hello, sir. We can start now. We can start. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, good morning, ev ev everybody. Uh, good morning, oral members, staff. Recording in uh, progress. Um, members of the public media and everybody who's on the platform, you are, you are, well, you are welcome. Um, as you know, we're still busy dealing with the, the second special appropriation, appropriation bill. Um, and to, today we have uh, <clears throat> invited South African Special Risk Insurance Association, popularly known as, 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 as SASRA. But before we, we, we do that, can I get indication of uh, any apologies? Good morning, Chairperson. Uh, honorable morning, Member Gary. Gates. Yes, I am your chair. My, for some reason, my computer didn't want to get off mute. Uh, yes, we received apologies from uh, Ms. Lonyana, Mr. Stick, and Mr. Shaky Mom. Ms. Dikhale also apologized, but she is in the meeting. And then we also received an apology on behalf of the Director General for National Treasury. Thank you, Chair. Thank, 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 thank you, thank you so much. Um, um, okay. As I said, we are, we are still busy with the second special ap appropriation bill. Sorry, Chair. <clears throat> yes, Raul Kaiser. Raul Kaiser. Good morning, Chair. Yes, Chair. Uh, maybe let me just indicate that uh, because of the reconfigured program of the NA, some of our members will be expected uh, to go to NA if uh, the, 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 if the program uh, demands us during this program, I, I just wanted the chairperson just to know that should that need arise, they, they would have to go uh, to ask question in the NA, Comrade, I mean, Honorable Dibua and Honorable Mlenza. Okay, that's, that's fine. They, they'll just keep tape of, of what is happening there. Uh, thank you, Honorable. Chair. Yes, Honorable Mlenza. Morning, Chair. Hope you're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> morning, Chair. Yes, Chair. Now, that is why what I wanted to also raise because I'm the whip of the day in the um, yes. NA. So, come 10 o'clock, I will unfortunately have to leave um, the meeting. Okay. Okay. That's Thank fine. you, sir. Thank you. Um, just for um, the public out there to know that uh, uh, why the programs are clashing of the oral members is because. Um, after the announcement of the, um, the, the Concord decision, um, Parliament had to uh, redo its program. So our program must continue and parliamentary program is continuing. That's why um, honorable members, will, some of the honorable members will have to find themselves in the National Assembly. That's understood, honorable members. Thank you very much. Um, so, just to, 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 to continue, as I said, we're still busy with the second special appropriation bill. Um, and uh, as part of uh, that bill, we then requested South African Special Risk Insurance Association, 
ואז עשו שינון סאסרה to come and interact uh, with uh, the, the, the committee, standing committee on appropriations. Uh, why is that? Uh, National Treasury is asking for the allocation of 3.9 billion rent, and they are saying for the recapitalization of, 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 of Sasria. Obviously, the first time we, 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 we interact with Sasria, uh, and we are, we are, we are, we are most uh, welcome. <laughs> Uh, why is it the first time? Um, I think it's the first time that Sasria comes to, um, uh, through National Treasury, come to National Parliament to request for the in, in allocation as it of 3.9 3 billion rand. Uh, Sasria, once you do that, uh, you become an entity of interest to us, or you become our, 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 our client once a, a Parliament considers allocating money uh, to you. <clears throat> That's the reason why we, we requested you to come here. So uh, you are welcome. What's going to happen now? Uh, we, we, are, we are going to allow you to take us through a presentation. And once you have finished your presentation, the honorable members will start uh, asking questions and then we'll expect you, uh, you to respond to those uh, questions. Then we'll, 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 we'll take it from there. I'm not sure who's leading the uh, uh, who's leading Sasria. Please introduce uh, 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 yourselves, uh, Sasria team, and then uh, uh, from there you can continue. Thank you. So, good morning, Chair. Uh, my name is Cedric Masondo. Uh, I'm the managing director of Sasria, and I'm with the executives MZ, our our executive in charge of compliance and legal. I've got uh, Suzanne, who's our chief risk officer. And I've also have Bachabulile, who's our financial director chair. Before I start chair, I'm not sure whether uh, our colleagues from National Treasure want to say something chair, they are my bosses. Uh, I don't want to break any protocols. And I will take uh, guidance from your chair. Mr. Masondo, let, let me start by asking you to take off your, your presentation because we, we, we must see whether we, we haven't interacted with the committee. So if you can just show up, ah, oh, it's dark. Okay, let's, 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 let's fight. Okay, yes. this, this, yes. this, this, this Mr. Masondo. Yes. And I'm sure uh, your, your colleagues, when they, uh, when they talk to us, uh, they'll also show their faces so that we should know uh, who are who are who are dealing with. Um, okay, Mr. Masondo, it's 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 back to you. Um, if if you want to ask National Treasury to say something, um, yeah, yeah, you. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Let me ask. So, if she wants to say something, then I will carry on with the presentation, Chair. Good morning, honourable members. Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Cedric. I think we should go to the presentation and to the extent that the committee has questions for National Treasury, we will deal with them at that point. But we are here to, to support you. And as the chair said, you are now have become a customer, a very important stakeholder to, uh, to this committee. Over to you, Cedric. Thank you, Thank you yeah. Tepi. So if we chair, we can, I can have the presentation like it, please. Okay. Thank you, Chair. So, so let, let me start by thanking the committee for affording this opportunity. And you're right, Chair. Uh, this is the first time uh, we've come to the committee for, uh, for help and, and, and grateful for that the committee has given us the opportunity. We're going to just touch on three areas uh, our business, and we won't talk much about our business because I think when I read the research document, uh, uh, it contains almost everything. Uh, and then we'll talk about the, the impact of the Dubai riots, what it has done. And, and then the last one, I will, I will talk about the rebuilding plan, which is part of, of why we're here. So if you can just move to the next slides uh, and, and just move quickly on this one. So we, we are a short term insurance company born out of uh, 1976 rising. 
And at that time, the reinsurers and the insurance companies decided to pull out of this market and they decided they were no longer prepared to write this, this, this risk. And that's how Sandra was formed. If we can move to the next slide. And Chair, we are the only short-term insurance company in the country that provides this risk, and mainly because there is no appetite for insurance and, and, insur and reinsurers, they don't have an appetite to, to write this type of risk. And we've been in existence since 1979. Okay, move to the next slide. If we can move to the next slide, please. And but I will continue chair while the the operator is moving to the next slide. So we 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 write uh, uh, business for uh, co big corporate clients, uh, SMEs, commercial clients, state-owned companies, municipalities, and and roughly. Sorry, Mr. Masondo. Yes, chair. I just want to to see whether they can make you um, uh, what co-host so that you can deal with your slides. Yes, because thank you. As, you. as you talk, we want, we want to to follow on on your slides. Uh, Darren, can you allow Mr. Masondo to to deal with his slides? Darren, did you hear me? Yes, sir, person, I've done it. Yeah, so we can uh, so you can deal with your slides from your, your side, Mr. Masson. Is that fine? Yes. Okay. So that you bang bang busy. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, technology is uh, it's proving to be. Uh, Chair, uh, I'm sure they, I'm not sure whether members can see the slides now. No, no, we can't, we can't. Try again to open it. We just see your uh, documents and we see that it's not opening from our side. Okay. Yeah, we, we can see the slide now. Thank just you, take Chair. It, just take it to the to the slide uh, mode. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so maybe let me ask my colleague Suzanne if you can just project the slides, Chair. Um, or or yes. Suzanne has it. Uh, that's fine. We're, we're on your hands. Yeah. In your hands. Okay. Jefferson, uh, yes, yes. I'm, yes. I'm going to have to make uh, Suzanne the, also a co host, but I'm going to remove the co host permissions from Mr. Mavi. So now I'm going to. That's fine. Okay, Chair, I'm, apologies, I'm old school, so technology can be problematic for me. So, but I will be guided by Suzanne just to write put the slide for me. That's 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 fine. Um, it's it's your, it's your, in Parliament we have got something which we call uh, you are you are made in debate, so we become <laughs> very uh, patient. So this time is your made in appearance to uh, 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 to the committee. So take your time. Okay, thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you can move to the next slide, Suzanne. So I, I, as I've indicated, say, uh, I think the committee is familiar with the business and what we do, but I just thought it might be, it, it, it might be important just to take the committee through again to what is our business. And so, and if you can move to the next slide, Suzanne. So, and this is how Chair the Saja was formed. It was formed in 1979. 
And at that time, it was formed as a, as a 621 company. And, 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 and the reason was that uh, uh, it, 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 and it was formed on the basis that we cover, uh, we provide cover on a non-refusable basis and non-cancellable and, and, and affordable. So let me explain what that means. It means that we can't refuse cover. Everyone who comes to Saja and asks for this type of cover, we have to offer this cover. And irrespective of when the, the people wants to cover, uh, wants this cover. So when the riots were, 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 I mean, uh, were taking place, we saw an increase in demand that week and people were wanting to buy the Sajra. And in terms of our own regulations, we had to offer them cover. So secondly, it's non cancelable and, and this is irrespective of how we're getting claims, uh, we have to continue to offer this cover to the individual. And, 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 and it's been always our, our, our goal since 1979 that we must cover, we must provide cover that is affordable and, and we must not abuse our position as being the only insurer uh, in this country. So that's how the company is formed and that's how we've been operating since 1979. We're governed by two ads, uh, the Convention Act and then the reinsurance act. In 1989, uh, Saja was was uh, became a state owned company uh, as a section 3b company 100% owned by government and, and, and members might remember before that we didn't have a, a, a proper owner but uh, in 1979 uh, government became the the only shareholder for Saja and national treasurer or the minister of finance became the shareholder representative so we are accountable to national treasurer and and we operate like any other state-owned companies. If we can move to the next slide, Suzanne. And and yeah, so I've talked about that. So and and when the Saja was formed initially, uh, and and there was no capital injection, but it was uh, companies at the time get it together, and the idea was that uh, claims will be paid out of premium. If that becomes the claims becomes bigger than premium. And, and the, the insurance companies will come in and, and, and place their balance sheet. And then the government was the reinsurer of last resort. And the reason for that, Chair, was that the, the, it, in, in the time when Sazra was formed, and even through the 80s, the reinsurance companies, which normally sits behind insurance companies, did not have an appetite uh, to provide this cover. And, and that's why the government, government continued to provide uh, a, a, government guarantee until it was quite easy to get reinsurance and then the, the, there was a retraction of the unlimited. So at that time, it was an unlimited government guarantee, but then we were able to buy reinsurance in an open market and, and there was no need for that. So we've continued in that format where we collect premium. Out of that premium, we pay all our expenses, including claims. And, and then out of that, we, we the premium, the, the, the profit that's left, Chair, we use that to we use that to build our our reserves, and and, and, and I must add that when Saja was converted in 1979, sorry 1989, uh, there was money paid over to government to pay the government debt, and which we're proud of that is a company that uh, we contributed to the reduction of the government debt. So it was quite a couple of billions, Chair. And, and of course, before that, Saja wasn't paying that and, and, and it had accumulated decent uh, uh, capital. And at that time, there was no need for that because we could buy reinsurance uh, in the open market. Suzanne, if I can move to the next slide. So these are our clients, Chair, uh, corporate, commercial. Uh, they, they are the biggest contributors to our revenue. Uh, even though in numbers, uh, they are not as big as your SMEs or private individuals. But in terms of revenue, uh, we rely on corporate big commercial, about 80% of our revenue comes from those one. And it's simple, Chair, because they, those companies, special corporate clients have got high values. And the rate that we charge, it's based on values. So the premium they pay to us, it's quite big, whereas the SMEs and the private individuals, uh, we, we, the premium, it's small. 
and I'm sure to, to most people who are known as a, as a 45, uh, 45 rand company or 450 company. And that's because that's a premium we charge for individuals, uh, uh, companies, and uh, individuals, which is the private client. So our premium for the SMEs and the individual, it's quite small. Um, and also mainly, mainly because the, the, the claims that we'll get from those ones might be we might be getting a lot of claims but in terms of the severity those are not big drivers of this claim then we'll see when we talk about the, the july events that we had a lot of claims from the smes but in terms of values a uh, few claims from big corporates really generated uh, big claims uh, in terms of values we also uh, state-owned companies our our clients and municipalities, municipalities are our biggest clients also at tertiary institutions. So those are our big clients, Chair. If I can just add, one of the areas that uh, we, we wanted to, uh, to really focus uh, going forward is to increase the penetration level at the SME. We do have a product that's quite reasonable. In fact, I must say it's quite affordable but uh, that product is distributed through insurance companies. And we've seen that it's not as success, the uptake is not as, as, as great as what we'd like. And we, we are exploring using technology and going direct to the SMEs because one of the, of the learnings that we've learned here is that there were quite a number of SMEs that could easily afford our product and they didn't have our product. So if we move to the next slide, Suzanne. Sorry, just before I go to the next slide, uh, Chair. So our business model, uh, we work on a very lean structure uh, and, and that's why we've been able to manage and really contain our cost. So we work hand in hand with the private insurance companies and they issue policies on our behalf. So of course, we start with the broker advising the client about the need for surgery and then they, they, they the insurance companies, all insurance companies are our agents, and then they issue police on our behalf. And when there's a, and they will collect premium, and and the clients doesn't get two policies. The client gets one policy, and that policy will include Saja. As, as most members will know, Saja is not compulsory. Some clients might opt not to have Saja. Some might have Saja. So, but there's only one policy that is issued. When the claim comes, the first assessment is done by the agent companies. And then if it's proven that it's a surgery claim, they will forward to us. That really allow us chair to have only staff of 130 people. And one of the things that we've done well is to manage our cost. So our cost structure, uh, if you just look at our cost in terms of premium as a percentage, we work on a band of six to eight percent. And we want to, and as it's part of our budgeting that we should never exceed uh, more than 8% in terms of our own cost. And in terms of our salaries, the personal cost, uh, that eight to 6%, uh, 45% should not be more than that. So and if you just look at our personal cost to the premium, it's really under, it's really under 3%. So Chair, I think I've given a background about what we do and, 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 and as a company, so we've been running the business for 29 years. And this is the second year uh, in the last 10 years uh, where we've had an underwrite a loss, a net loss. So the, the first loss we had in the previous uh, year before last, uh, and then this is the biggest one. Insurance companies, the budget for that, that's part of the risk appetite that every, it depends on the risk appetite. Every 10 years, you expect to make an underwriting loss. And, 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 and we also have to provide capital. And the capital that's required by the, by the provincial authorities that we must be prepared for eventualities of one in 200 event. So if, if there's something that can be regarded as a one in 200 event, we must have enough capital to pay claims and still be operating and, and so on. So, and if the members have seen our, and this is measured through what we call SCR. So not only did we have the, the required minimum limit as required by the FSP, we had 323%, which means that our capital as required by the FSP, uh, by the Prudential Authority was three times that the required. So 
if I move to the next, what happened in, 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 in July, and then uh, and Jabu, our financial director, will also talk about the, the financials, the implication of the, to the financial. Move to the next slide, Suzanne. So this is what happened in July. In, in July, so these are just uh, we've received claims about twenty one billion so far, but we expect that will be between uh, twenty to twenty five billion now. Uh, the reason why we can't say exact amount what we're gonna have is because we're now going through a process of reviewing every estimate that we've received. And in some cases, the claims is now being assessed and we're now dealing with payment of claims. And the claims itself move up and down. In some cases, the loss adjuster might have overstated, in some cases might have understated. So, but we expect now that the range will be between 20 and 25 billion in terms of their losses. This will be the biggest uh, for the company, also probably the biggest for the country for and I went back and I was just Googling uh, on the, 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 the most expensive riots in the world in the past 10 years. And two came close to this one. So the, the first one was the riots that the Americans experienced with the death of Floyd. And that was over 20 states. And that was about 1.5 billion. And then the other one was the Chilean riots that ran over a couple of, of, of months. So this is going to be the biggest because this was only a week and the intensity and the extent of the damage was, was severe. Mr. Masson, course, just, Mr. Yes, Masson just, just on that one, if you are saying it was 1.5 billion, was it 1.5 billion dollars or rents? Sorry, Chair, it was 1.5 billion dollars. And the Chilean one was about two billion US dollars. So if you look at what we're expecting now, Saja, uh, it's about let's say take the maximum twenty-five billion. But this excludes claims that were that were people that didn't buy Saja. But it also excludes claims. Tell what I forgot to mention is that on top of what we offer, uh, there is an open market that provides cover above us. So that also excludes claims that might that will be paid by by our insurance companies, uh, and that is coming through uh, London market as their insurer. So, so we we probably after counting the cost, uh, this will rank as one of the biggest losses uh, in, in in the world in the last ten in the last ten years. So the, the case at end was the, was the one that was uh, affected, uh, we say 70%, but it might even be 80, 20%. How uh, thing was not as, as badly affected as the case at end. So, but yeah, so big damages were mainly in case at end. And I think members have seen the malls were damaged, but the bulk of the damages were stock, stock looted, uh, stock lost, and this cut across the type of business from a retail to a really small SMEs where they lost everything. And, 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 and then two malls being banned completely. So the damage for us includes uh, malls damage, stock and fittings and features and, and, and stuff like that. If we move to the next slide, uh, Suzanne. So this is, and this is a slide share that shows the bands uh, so on the on the left side it shows frequency, and you can see claims below one million, about seven thousand, but they only contribute about two billion. And on the far you can see claims up between three hundred above three hundred million. Uh, they're about twelve foot uh, sixteen, uh, but they contribute almost twelve billion. And this is just the nature of claims. When the, you get a lot of claims uh, from the, and the, the smaller one will be the SMEs. Uh, and then the, the one to 10, billion, to 10 million or one to 30 million will be mainly supermarkets where the stock was stolen and, and the fittings destroyed. But the, the, it just shows Chair, that we did have SMEs that had SASIA and there were many that claimed, and these are the claims that were busy processing, but they didn't contribute much in terms of the, of, of the claims. 
Hence, that's why when I was talking about the contributors in terms of the premium, that the big corporates tend to contribute a lot, but when you had to come in and pay, uh, it, it goes into billions. If we move to the next slides. So, Jen, this is where we are. We've received about 98%. Uh, of course, there will be 2% where it's late, or, and, and we are now on about 22 billion in terms of the claims reported. So far, we've paid uh, about 2.8 billion. And our target in the four, uh, four to six months uh, and is to pay 80% of those claims that are put in the, in the smaller bands. We want to pay all those claims 80% by October. And, and then the, the mid-sized claims want to complete and pay the 80% of those ones in six months time. And the bigger one chair where there's rebuilding and the malls and so we, we starting the project to, uh, with the clients. Yesterday, we had a meeting with Itala and Itala owns number of properties that were damaged and, and about four properties were completely banned and even with structural damage. So the process of rebuilding will take between 12 to 24 months on this one. So these are our targets, very stiff targets. And, and Chair, I must add that uh, I forgot to mention that claims below 1 million, we've entered into agreement with our insurance colleagues, agent companies, and they're processing all those claims. So that means that they get the claims, they assess, they check everything, and then they make payments. We've given them the floats, and every time the floats reaches 50% and, and we give them money. It really helped us because it, 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 it relieved us from dealing with small claims. And, and, and in any case, the insurance companies sit with a lot of information and it's easy and quicker for them to deal with those claims. The next slide, Suzanne. So this one, Chair, I will give it to uh, Jambo, our financial director, and this just that our focus, what we're expecting in the next 12 months, and she will take the committee through, and then I will come at the end with the rebuilding plan. Jambo, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Masondo. Um, and, and through you, Mr. Chair, uh, I greet you this morning and, and the members of the sitting. Uh, I, I'm going to switch off uh, my camera now uh, to continue with the presentation. <clears throat> okay, uh, let me speak into the finances uh, of, of Sastria. Uh, this slide here is a history of the last, of about the last uh, five years, um, actual performance. Uh, in terms of our gross written premium, which is our turnover. And uh, the last block, which you see focus 2022, that is where, as Sasha, we are expecting uh, to, to finish off in terms of our gross written uh, premium uh, post this July, uh, July unrest. So what you see here, you are seeing a very strong uh, Sastria uh, that has grown from 2017 from 1.8 billion to a forecast of about 3.4 billion in, in gross written uh, premium in this uh, financial year at hand. The last financial year of 2021, uh, was an excellent year because despite COVID, Sasria managed to grow uh, its, its gross written premium at 15% uh, uh, year on year growth. You can go to, to the next slide. Thank you very much. And then what you see in this slide, uh, you are seeing the claims that have been incurred uh, by Sasria in the last five years being the actuals. And now post the July uprising, you are seeing the claims that are going to be uh, uh, registered as incurred in the financial year of 2022 of about 13.8 billion. This, as Mr. Masondo said, this, uh, this uh, size of claims has never been 
uh, is, is probably one of uh, uh, those that have not been seen uh, yet. And uh, if you if you cast your eye, uh, if you cast on uh, your eye on 2019, you can see that the number of claims that we incurred was about 1.5 billion, which is unusually high compared to to the other years. Um, and that is the one year which Mr. Masondo referred to where Sastra experienced a, a loss. And uh, you can, but, but you can see in the following year of 2022 and 2021, uh, Sastra returned back to profitability, especially 2021 was a different year because that is a year when we experienced mostly lockdowns. Uh, throughout the years, and some lockdowns were quite uh, were, were serious, like the level fives, and there were not much movements um, uh, that would uh, say encourage um, maybe people to 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 together and begin uh, maybe to, uh, uh, to 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 strike or or, or organize a, a, a riot or, or something. Let me go to the next slide, please. We have suffered a, a, a loss in, in 2019. Here you are looking at our net underwriting results. Basically, um, to, to, I can, I can for, for the purposes of those who are not familiar with the insurance company, I can call this probably, I can, I can call it a gross profit. It's like a gross profit. Um, kind of. So, so what you are seeing here, you are seeing us as Sastria experiencing a loss in the year 2019. When you look at the last five years, there is a loss that we are making because of, if you recall, there was that 1.5 billion uh, uh, claim claims that we had to deal with, and then now uh, you are seeing in 2022 which is the year at hand that post the July uprising, you are seeing us ending up with a loss, uh, a net underwriting loss of um, about 12.33 billion. And it's, it's all due mainly to the claims that we are experiencing in this, in this current financial year. If you recall in the slides earlier, we are expecting the, claims to be between 20 and 25 billion. You can go to the next slide. Um, Sastria has had a, has enjoyed a strong balance sheet um, in the last, uh, in the last, in the last couple of years. And um, you would recall if you have had an experience, if you have looked at our integrated report that we have assets of about close to 10 billion, about 9.5 billion worth of assets. And uh, these assets have been built despite that huge dividend which we paid uh, to, to, to government of about over 11 billion. Um, I can't remember the year, is it 2009, Mr. Masondo? can remind me there of the year. Despite that huge dividend which we paid out, uh, Sasha has managed to grow its, its uh, asset base to about close to 10 billion. And this has allowed us to have a sufficient uh, cover, uh, which, which is a cover of more than three times in, uh, in covering our, our total liabilities. And what you see in this slide, you have, we as Sastria, we managed to benefit in terms of these assets of 10 billion by experiencing investment income because we've had these assets invested in, the, in bonds, in equities, in the money market, some of it in the reserve bank and some of it as cash in our in our normal normal bank accounts this has caused us to experience a positive net investment income which has contributed into the profitability of Safra in the last in the last 5 years especially in the last year of 2021 it was a stelling performance because our net investment income that we experienced out of our assets was close to 800 million in this year 
we are only focusing about 269 million simply because we are having to liquidate all of this 10 billion or 9.5 billion and pay, start set using it to settle our claims. So we can say as much as this, these assets are not all going to be utilized in this financial year of 2022, we, st we will still hold some in our, in our reserve bank account, in, in us, uh, a sub account, in our money market. However, um, the drop in, in, the, in the assets will be felt by that drop uh, which you see in the net investment income. Please go to the next slide. This slide is, is obvious. Um, we have been a profitable company. You look at the, uh, the last five years, we have been a profitable company. And in, four, in, in, in 2022, you will see that we are, do, we are having a loss of 12.1 billion to be recorded. You can go to the next slide. And, and that, the, the importance of that slide, again, the, the significance of the previous slide, you don't have to go back to it, is that as much as we have been in the top 30 um, of the companies that contribute to SARS revenue from this financial year, unfortunately, SASRA has been hit to the extent that we will not be contributing uh, to the to the fiscals through the the significant taxes that we would ordinarily contribute that ended us uh, being a, in the top thirty of the large companies large contributors of of revenue in South Africa. So in this, you see our equity uh, because of our assets being uh, quite healthy at 9.5 billion, you can see that we have a positive equity throughout all the years. We, because we have been profitable throughout the years, you also see that our equity book has been growing from 5.7 billion to 8.3 billion in the last financial year. However, post the, the, the uprising, then you see us uh, dropping uh, to a state uh, of of almost uh, big, of of insolvency, whereby our our assets, whereby our assets have been have been wiped out uh, to the extent that our liabilities far exceeded our assets. However, you see that uh, we with the with the assistance of our our reinsurance our. Our, our, our assets and our equity, you will see some recovery taking place. And number two, you will also see with our revenue uh, or our gross return premium that we are, we are aggressively focusing on in terms of uh, revisiting our, our, our rates in terms of uh, 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 the, the new products and in terms of uh, the, the larger uptake, which, which has been promoted by what has just uh, happened in July. You see that there is still a positive equity, however, not may not be sufficient uh, to, for Sastria to meet its solvency capital requirements in terms of the prudential authority and, and the license conditions. You can go to the next slide. Our financial position is, is simple, it's still telling the, the story I'm busy telling in words, is that our assets, when you look at the last financial year, our assets, are standing at over 10 billion. Our liabilities are standing at 1.6 billion. This is where you see that in terms of our assets, we are more than, uh, 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 we're covering our liabilities more than three times. And then if you look at uh, the March 2022, you can see our assets Yes, are at 11.5 billion, but you might say, but you are growing. Yes, indeed. What you are seeing there, as I explained earlier, the assets that I referred to of 9.5 billion, especially, I did say that we have started to liquidate them 
those investments because we expect to settle our, our, our claims obligations that have arisen due to the July uprising. And, and what you see there, we are not going to be paying out all those claims in this financial year, as Mr. Masondo explained, the staggered approach uh, on, of, on, of the different sides of claims and the different approaches of the rebuild um, settlement, settling the, the rebuild. So also plus you are seeing the positive there emanating from us claiming from our, our reinsurers to the extent of uh, 6.5 billion plus. So we still have that positive uh, uh, reflection on, on our total assets. Then if you cast your eyes on our total liabilities, this is emanating from some of the claims that we are already uh, uh, recognizing in this, in this financial year. And, and our equities obviously has been affected downwardly. Please go to the next slide. I think uh, this, uh, this slide, I'm not gonna dwell much in, in this slide. It is showing our balance sheet, what our balance sheet is going to be looking like at the end of March, 2022, the financial year at hand versus the, the last financial year of 2021. Maybe to talk briefly about the last year of financial year 2021, you can see that um, as Sasha, we held a very strong balance sheet with our financial, uh, with our total assets reflected at, at 10 billion and 3.2 uh, billion of that being, being cash and, and 6.2 billion of that uh, being uh, being some of our financial assets, as I have explained, that are invested across um, across the different the different asset managers in 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 equity, in bonds, and and in the money markets. And then, if you cast your eyes downwardly, uh, you will see the total liabilities. Uh, when we, we, we finished off the year, our, our total liabilities in terms of claim were only 1.3 billion. And I did say that March 2021 financial year was quite soft in terms of the claims experience. And then you can see that that number suddenly bulks up to 10.3 billion due to the, the claims that we, we, are, we are experiencing. And then um, if you look at equity, Lastly, if you look at equity, look at the retained earnings um, uh, um, a row in the middle, you can see we finished off very strongly uh, at 8.3 billion due to the, the work that's been done over, over, over the, the good work that's been done over the previous years and, and to make to a loss and negative retained earnings of, of 2.9 billion. And, and then the reason why we're here, you can see a new number that's creeping, that's uh, popping up, that number of 3.9 billion, which we are hoping um, a, a parliament would, would consider as positively. And that number comes in and gets injected there. And then we go back to, to a positive, a positive equity uh, scenario and also begin to build. Uh, uh, through the rebuilding program, which uh, Mr. Masson slightly touched on. Please go to the next slide. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks. much. Yeah. Thanks, Chabu. Chair, let me just continue. I think we are now in a better position than we were uh, in July, where we we're just overwhelmed by the number of claims. And if I just move to the next slide, Chair, and I'm also mindful of the time for the members, but I'm sorry, Susan, the previous slides. Uh, okay, so yeah, so that's fine, uh, this one. So, I mean, so we, we needed to come up with something, Chair, and just deal with the, with the immediate issues, medium term and the long term. And, and I must say boldly, Chair, that we, we are anticipating that we'll be back to profitability in 2022-2023. And, and, and we, we then to do that, the number of things that we've done. Uh, of course, operational capacity, that's claims management, that's a process we're, we're busy with, just making sure that we set claims as quickly as possible. 
We also don't want this to, have to, to go to the next financial year with a big outstanding claims in our record. So, and we, it's in our best interest that we set claims as quickly as possible. But we also want to mitigate against claims escalation. So that's why I've put those targets. The second part that we needed to do was, liquid, was liquidity. Uh, cash, uh, it's, it's important. So you need money to pay claims. And one of the things we've done, as Jabu said, we had money in different classes of asset and equity bonds we've liquidated. We are now sitting on cash. On a daily basis, we do a cash flow forecasting. And, and then the last one, just to look at the cost, uh, managing cost and, and stuff like that. And, and I will talk about the SCR when we talk about it. And if we move to the next slide, Suzanne, the, the previous one with the two assets and liabilities. Uh, yes. This morning, Chair, I woke up with number of phone calls, everyone phoning me because everyone is worried that Saja is broke, they're not gonna pay their claims. And everyone wants to put their claims first before the money run out. And, and we thought this is important for us to share the slides. So if you look, we've got assets and liabilities. So we look at 22 billion claims. If we receive 22 billion claims and we had to be asked to pay these claims today or the next month, would we be able to pay it? And bear in mind, Chair, that the process of paying claims, it's not something we do it over, over, over a week. It takes long time. So if you look at the assets, we've got a, we, we, we started uh, before this event with, with about 10, point, I mean, 10 billion assets, that's money in different classes, and we've not had any capital erosion. So that money, was, we're able to liquidate some of, of the bonds and equity and convert it into cash. And that money has dropped because we've paid some of the claims. So which means that the liability part have also dropped. We have a reinsurance structure, two type of reinsurance structure and 6.5 billion. This is the money we will recover from, from the reinsurers. And we've not had any objection. All the reinsurers have, have been uh, are ready to pay claims. And the way you recover money from reinsurers, you pay first and then you get money from the reinsurers. Some reinsurers have, have volunteered and, and, and paid us upfront. And so that's really helped. And then there's 1.6 billion, that's mainly for the rep cover, which is a billion, that money will recover from the reinsurers. And that leaves us with the 3.9 billion. So with the 3.9 billion, we'll be able to pay claims and, and pay all claims without any problem. So the 3.9 is important in our calculation, but this calculation chair does not take into account the current business where we're seeing a, a growth in our revenue we're seeing claims not as bad as, as, as what we've anticipated. So if, we, if you remove the July riots uh, and you, you just look at the business, the normal business, we are, we are profitable. And this is the slide we share with the committee that the first quarter we made a, a 300 million profit uh, if you remove it. So this slide does not take that into account that the business is growing. We're still generating revenue. Our and our all our expense are not going to be paid by the 3.9 billion that we're talking about. All our expense, reinsurance, increase in reinsurance will be paid by the normal business. So I think Chair, I really want to emphasize on these slides that uh, the money that we require, uh, the 3.9, and 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 once we, we we finalize the claims, the further capital that we might be required. The 3.9 will really help now in terms of the claims, but and, and but we also need money to recapitalize the business. And we've, we've got a number of options on how we can recapitalize the business. So this is the money that we're not gonna use to pay our salaries, and that's paid by the normal business. And, and, and we will not run into, into liquidity or not having money to pay claims. As we speak, we're paying claims, we've paid two point, I mean, uh, 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 just under three billion, and every day we process claims and we're paying claims and we'll continue to pay claims. And, and, and we, the liquidity is not as a big problem for us as the solvency. Solvency is a big problem for us because we need to recapitalize the business. As uh, our FDF said, 
when we when when the when we had a good balance sheet of 10 billion, the riots wiped out that balance sheet. So you need to recapitalize so that you, we are in a good position and to capitalize. If we move to the next slide, Suzanne. Yeah, so I've talked, yeah, this is the slide chair. I wanted just to spend time a little bit. What is our plan? Uh, because we, we, we can't just come to the committee and say, please give us 3.9 billion. And so our plan is or is is or is based on four pillars. Is to settle claims as quickly as possible. And 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 firstly was to appoint loss adjusters, register claims, and set claims as possible. We are now on the second phase of settling claims. We've appointed loss adjusters, we're getting reports, we're now settling claims, and we have enough money to do that. And the second one was just to look at our cost, make sure that we don't uh, run into high cost, we manage our cash flow, we liquidate our, our investment, and we get full money from reinsurance. Those are the main things that we're doing on a daily basis to make sure that one. And then the, the, the and I'll come to recapitalization. The fourth one is to, out of this crisis, what can we do? You know, and 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 there, we, as I've said, we need to focus on uninsured, and we need to make sure that this product is available. We need to make sure this product is accessible, and we are focusing that this business will grow. Uh, this year, we will expect an increase in, in the growth, but we expect even the business to grow future. And then the last one is recapitalization. Like I've said, uh, our biggest challenge is not liquidity. Our biggest challenge is capital. The business needs to be, capital, to be capitalized. We've embarked on three strategies on recapitalization. As, as, the, as, as the business SCR dropped below one, we needed to inform the regulator and we needed to present the plan to the regulator. And the plan is in three areas, new reinsurance, premium rates, and capital injection. If we move to the next slide. Next slide, Suzanne. So this is our plan. How do we move from an area where we're below SCR to an area where we are, we are in the acceptable level of SCR? Yeah, in this current financial year, we've seen an increase in the product. And we've also implemented, we're going to implement a rate increase, which will be effective from the 1st of January 2022. And we, we expect this year we'll close the year on, on around 3.4. And with the rate increases and the new initiatives, this will move the business from 3 billion to 4.7 billion. But that's still not enough in terms of, of, of addressing the capitalization. Then we've embarked on a new reinsurance uh, structure and buying more reinsurance. Uh, we've added a layer on the reinsurance, but we also move on a quota share, which really contributes a lot in terms of, 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 of capital. Of course, reinsurance is important. It's one way of capitalizing the business without capital injection, but it's got its pros and cons share. Uh, we, our reinsurance cost used to about four to six to five percent. And now with the new structure, uh, our insurance cost will be now be in the region of 65%. And that's just the reality because we could uh, we could go to to the to the government and ask for the whole money. And then the last one is the capital injection. So all three are important to bring the business back to acceptable level of capitalization. So the 3.9 billion that we are talking about uh, will not be enough on claims between 20 and 25 billion. The, the exact number of what will what will be required, it's a discussion that we're going to have it with National Treasure, but we'll also need to take other things into consideration, not just capital injection only. And, and capital injection is quite important, but we need to look at other things before we, 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 we have that discussion. That's a discussion ongoing but we'll finalize the plan going forward uh, on what is the additional capital that we might need uh, to, to, to be profitable. So, and, and these are just the, 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 the numbers based on what we look at it. Uh, on the 20 billion, we might, the capital that might be needed, it's 5.6, which is, uh, which also it, it includes the 3.9. So it's about two point something more. And if the claims are above 25 billion, uh, we need probably additional uh, seven billion, 
but these are make, these are the uh, the maximum numbers. But we'll need to look at other things. So, chair, and and I think chair, thank you very much for being kind to me and for allowing me to when I'm struggling with technology. But chair, I want to my last message to to the committees. Thank you for allowing us. And all the years we've we've really tried hard and to do our best not to appear in this committee for money. And we've tried hard, and I think we've, success, we've been successful for years to be a self-sustainable business. And, and, and like any other insurance companies, in one in 100 years, you get the biggest losses that hits your balance sheet. We are in that, in that situation. We are asking the committee uh, to, to be favorable to us this is a business that we think it's quite profitable. This is a business that has been profitable for years. And this is a business that is playing a very important role. And, and, and we will be profitable as early as next year. Thank you, Chair. And, and, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Masondo. Um, and Jab, I didn't get Jabu Seni. It's a uh, bacha bulilem tiane. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sasha, for your, for, your, for your presentation. Um, what will happen now? The oral members will, uh, uh, will be asking questions. Uh, you'll be noting the questions as they ask them. Um, okay, uh, sorry. I, um, I was saying that all members would be asking questions. Please note them. Uh, and then uh, you, you decide uh, uh, MD uh, in your team who deals with what. OK. Uh, all members, you know how we do it. Can I get indications of people who would like to ask questions? Tipo Peters. For Sarah Pen. Tipo uh, Peters. Peters, Sarah Pen. Matafa. Uh, Matafa. Let's mute, honorable members. Let's mute. Let's mute. Thank you. Let's mute. Uh, I've got honorable Peters, honorable Sarupen, honorable Matafa. Honorable Tehale. Honorable members. Okay, um, I know um, other oral members are also dealing with the National Assembly, but uh, please, if you are available, please come in, indicate once you are available. Uh, let's start with Honorable Peters. Honorable Peters, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. I apologize for the background noises because I'm actually sitting in an area that is usually occupied by lots of people. Um, my office here in parliament is very far for me to be able to reach assembly, national assembly chamber quickly. So I came to the restaurant here. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And uh, with your indulgence, may I be allowed to switch off my camera? That's, that's perfect, Peters. Thank you, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I want to thank uh, uh, for the presentations that they have made to this committee and also for the information that uh, they are bringing to us. Like you indicated, this is their maiden presentation to the committee. So it means that they are sharing information that might not have been on our other screens for a very long time. I just want to find out, uh, uh, taking into consideration the history, the background, and the, the financial issues related to, to, to Sastre, I want to know how well known in our communities is Sastre and the value of Sastre so that uh, uh, people and businesses can understand that this is an a, a institution that can support them in events of the nature that happened in July. Although uh, there have been incidences in the past of a, a minimal uh, a damage to uh, properties in, in, in situations of riot. But I think it is important that 
South Africans know about this particular reinsurer. Mm -hmm. I just want to know under normal or ordinary circumstances, what is the annual quantum of claims granted, uh, I mean, against claims against Sastria? I've seen the presentation. Unfortunately, the, the slides were not numbered or the, I didn't see the numbers, but I, I, I would want to know more on, on that. What is Sastria's footprint across the South African landscape, and especially for emerging Black businesses? Also, Chaperson, what is the number of social claims that have been reported or referred to insurance ombudsman? Has there been any uh, uh, challenges or has there been any uh, aggrieved uh, uh, claimants? Of these, what is the number of complaints related to incidents of non-payment of claims and or claims not paid on time? The, 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 the July 20, 2021 situation, I just want to find out, the agricultural sector was also affected by the July 2021 unrest with fields burnt, theft of livestock, burnt warehouses, or farmers not being able to transport produce. What cover does Sasria offer to the agricultural sector? Now being almost planting season, how is Sasria prioritizing claims for the agricultural sector to ensure minimal disruptions to the planting season and safeguard food security? The, I, I also with regard to the July 2021 situation, are there any other areas other than the identified areas in the eastern part of Houten as well as in KZN? the 70% the, the or so that you are indicating in KZN and almost 30% in Houting. But are there any other provinces that might have had, although minimal or not publicized time or type of uh, challenges and claims in, 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 uh, in those areas? Thank you very much, Chair. And apologies once more for the background noise. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Peters, Honorable Sarupen. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, again, I, as you know, I have bandwidth issues, so my apologies for the camera. Um, to Sazria, I think let me start by thanking Sazria for being financially prudent for so many years and for being well run and for not having to require a bailout as a consequence of mismanagement, which is what we see with so many SOEs that come before this committee. So I think that we must at least thank Sazria for the work that they've done to ensure that they are not um, bankrupt, that they don't come for bailouts, and that um, there's no mismanagement, and for being a, a rare bright spot as far as um, state-owned entities go. Uh, but with that said, I think the burning question, Chair, is that what is the quantum over and above the 3.9 billion rands coming in this adjustment budget? Mm -hmm. What amount do they estimate that they believe that they will need um, for the next financial year, uh, what, uh, on what basis have they come to that estimation, and so on. And beyond that, um, will, are they confident that they will no longer need any further capital injections after a second capital injection, presumably in the next financial year? And then chair, thirdly, I'd like to just understand, in terms of the sorts of claims that they pay out, which is as a result of political instability and violence and damages during riots and so on. How, does they, how do they compare to other insurers in other countries in terms of the amount of money they pay out annually under normal circumstances? Uh, is South Africa particularly more expensive, more risky in that regard? Does SASRIA pay out more than its um, equivalents in other countries? I'd like to get a sense of, of that as well, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Sarupen, thank you. Honorable Matafa, please come in. Thank you, Chair Pesen. Um, Chair, the same as Honorable Sarupen, please uh, allow me to engage without my video because of my connectivity. Uh, greetings, Chair. Thank you. Greetings to yourself and the team uh, from Sasria, as led by Ndatema Sondo. And thank you for a good presentation. Actually, Chair, I wanted to start in the, on the same note as uh, Honorable Sarupen 
to to thank um, Sasria for using uh, their funds and managing their business prudently. Because I remember there was an incident where there was a time where we discussed the entities that were showing a profit. And I think that there were three at the time and Sasria was one of them. So that is, is commendable. But having said that, uh, on the issue of uh, profits, I see they state that in 2018, there was an increase of claims, which resulted in a loss. Now, my, my interest there is just to find out what was the cause of that increase in those particular claims, and how did Sasria manage the volume because I suspect that where the claims are increased, there will also be a volume in terms of the number of claims that they are processing. And are there lessons that were drawn at that time which they can apply in today's situation where the claims are increased obviously by the unrest that we have witnessed in KZ and, 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 and Gauteng. Now, Chair, the second one, Honorable Peter speaks about awareness around, around Sasiria. Fortunately for someone like me who started their working life at a bank, moved to an insurance industry, I was exposed to Sasiria and, and I understood how, how it worked. But the first time I heard of them is when I started entering into that sector. Now, I'm not sure if whether could there be a lack of initiative to make it uh, known and to increase the awareness to people that can actually take up the insurance. Maybe Sasria can share with us uh, if whether are there any efforts that they put in the market to ensure that those that can benefit from the cover are aware of what it offers. Now, coupled to that, Chair, um, Ndadema Sondo speaks about the premium payment with uh, the corporate sector, especially the big corporates, being the highest payer, and obviously SMMEs not being that much of contributors. The question then begs, could this be the issue of awareness on the part of big corporates and lack of awareness on the part of the small guy? Or could it be that the assets of the big corporates are so vast that they will require a higher premium and the SMMEs are then not necessarily as big, hence the premium is a bit low. I'm just interested to find out what is the reason that we have a bigger proportion by uh, big corporates. Is it on the size of the premium or on the size of the asset base that they are covering that makes it that the SMMEs are contributing less into, into this particular cover. Uh, Chair, there's a question that I just, or a phrase that was used. I just wanted to find out what is meant uh, when they refer to cover is non-reusable and non-cancellable. It came in the presentation. I just want, I jumped, I'm just interested to find out what type of cover is that, is that particular cover that is non-cancellable. And on the issue of solvency, uh, and, and fortunately, the, Mr. Masondo speaks about them probably making a profit uh, in the next financial year. What will be the amount that Sasira will be able to pay out and not go into a stage of, solve, of insolvency? Meaning that how much is it possible for them to cover without risking the sustainability of the business? Chair, the last point is on slide 26. Uh, again, speaks to the solvency capital ratio, which is below 100%. And the entity might need further capital injection to, to bring it to the level of above 100%. What is the current solvency capital ratio and in terms of the financial regulation by the prudential authority or any other legislation that cover must uh, be in excess of, of 100%. By law, what is, what is the percentage that is required and that is acceptable 
in law that uh, should be attained by by an entity such as uh, SASRIA. For now, let me pause there, Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity to engage. Thank you. Thank you, Rabu Matafa. Uh, can I request Honorable Khaled to come in? Please continue. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me join uh, my colleagues in thanking Sasria for their presentation. Uh, Chairperson, <clears throat> As I was listening to the presentation, I am sure in their plan, they, they, they knew that one day they will face what happened in KZN, Rauting, and Mpumalanga. And why do I say this, Chairperson? Uh, why do I say I am sure? I thought, I think in their plans, they managed to say this is what will happen and this is what we'll put on the table so that we, we are able to cover whatever expenses that we are supposed to cover. So they are saying uh, by October, they should have paid 80% of the claims. And at the moment, the Mr. Masondo in his presentation is saying uh, they have paid 2.8 billion rand. So I don't know whether they will be able to cover this 80% because uh, October is next month. And if they can be able to cover it, then it will be good for, for Sasria. And the other thing, they are requesting for an injection. Well, Honorable uh, Saruben uh, is saying they are doing so well because this is the first time that they are looking for bailouts. And to me, I would say, because we are facing many challenges in all the departments with regard to service delivery in our rural areas, uh, because the, uh, uh, the, the, the plan of business is to make money and not to request money. So I was saying to Sasria, I was looking for them to, at least today, come to parliament or committee of parliament and say, because we were able to plan our things correctly, we have this lump sum of money that we are coming to this committee of appropriations and say to the committee, this is an amount that we are putting on the table to the committee so that they appropriate to uh, 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 assist our people in the rural areas. Chairperson, if it was according to me, I was going to say because uh, they are saying in their liability, uh, how can I put this one? They cover their liability. They said they, they, they are able to cover their, their liabilities uh, more than three times. So to me, legally, they are doing so well and they are responsible. So why do we then have to inject money into uh, an insurance that is doing so well? Uh, my request, Mr. Masondo and Mem Tiani, is that you, you, you assist uh, our rural areas in injecting something. It, go, it takes me to, to the last one whereby I was saying, uh, uh, whereby Mr. Matafa raised the point of them making an awareness that instead of like, if I'm harsh chairperson, I, I will apologize. Instead of them asking for injection, maybe they should make an awareness, make a, a lot of money and assist our communities. The, the, the traditional offices are open to welcome them if ever they want to make an awareness, even in the rural areas, so that they know where to go when they want to assist the, 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 the communities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Dikhali. Uh, Honorable Kaiso, please come in. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. I don't think I have uh, many questions. Uh, uh, my colleagues have actually covered me on a number of areas, uh, but I just want to actually commend as well uh, the good work that the SASRA has been doing over the past uh, years. Uh, and really there isn't no issue on, on, on 
on uh, say governance that one would say it has become a challenge so uh, a good work for the past years of you know successful you know uh, execution of their uh, task as as sasri <clears throat> now uh, you know often when we speak about you know damages and and uh, etc you know uh, our focus sometimes would be on the areas where there's big business and uh, and some formal um, uh, uh, business or small business, but we, we, we often forget that there is also some level of uh, because you know because of the condition of our economy as it is, uh, there are a number of, of, of our people who are uh, really on the streets uh, trying to do uh, some business, but not necessarily being aware of Sasria, for instance. You go to West Street uh, or to, uh, uh, in one street in Jobek, uh, where the violence took place, uh, you, you find that as, as the violence is, uh, is, is taking place there, there are certain people that we often forget that they are also uh, doing a business, but uh, in an informal way. And uh, they're not necessarily covered by Sasria uh, in most instances. I don't know what Sasria is thinking, is thinking about that situation given the fact that we have been able for these years, you know, to manage successfully, you, 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 uh, that uh, uh, company, but you were not aware that what you can do about the ones that are just, uh, you know, trying to do some business because, uh, I mean, they are doing something at the street level, but they are not really formalized in a form of a, a fully fleshed a small business a company, or, or, but they are, they, are, they are doing some business at the street level, and there are many of our people. Haven't you applied your mind in future? Because in most instances, I've heard you read uh, talking about in I mean in making reference to other countries like Chile and uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, you mentioned a number of countries where violence or violent protest uh, ravaged the, the, the city and rampaging and destroying uh, the properties. Uh, so including uh, even those that were not as much uh, fortunate like big business or a small registered, uh, uh, I mean, business entities could, you know, access insurance. But at the end of the day, they know each and every time when there is such a type of violence, uh, it, it, it would not, you know, it, it would not uh, discriminate. Uh, it will just everything will be rampaged uh, from from West Street to that other end of the street, including those who are not members of Sasri. You see, I don't know what Sasri thinks about that situation. How can you bring about awareness? Uh, and, and see in future, because you know what happens, because this, they represent a very, uh, a, well, they are in, 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 a, in a big percentage, informal, but they represent a certain level of income uh, to feed their community, I mean, their families. Because if I've put, for instance, a, a fake cake, uh, then they it is destroyed. Uh, and and I, I used to raise about 100 rand a day. If it is destroyed in a violence uh, situation, it will mean uh, I will never ever uh, start or, or that business, that business uh, small it is, is or insignificant as it may be. But the fact remains that I feed my family uh, a family of seven with that 100 rand a day that I earn as a profit during that day. But after that violence, 
it will never be counted as something that has been destroyed uh, because they vary according to the size, those that are small you know, uh, business at the street level. They are not necessarily being counted as doing business. Uh, they are just being summarily being, uh, uh, you know, uh, termed, ah, it's just a, a vendor, you know. Uh, even a vendor is a big name. It's just people on the street selling apples and, and, and fat cakes. But the reality is given the nature of the economy and the crisis, it finds itself. Those people are actually raising some income uh, uh, to feed their family. But once, like I'm saying, che, when the violence ravages, uh, everything is destroyed at the end of the day, those people will not have anything to start, uh, to start such a business. Have, have, have such real thought of, what can be done in future? Because I think there are also people who need assistance in future, such that, that they don't always look to government to, to, uh, for a donation. But at least if there is an awareness, you know, such, uh, such that at least there could be something that can be made aware about them and, and at what, you know, range or level that Sasria Sas can say, no, at this sector, we can assist in this manner, at least, you know, it's better that some somebody say, I will claim 500 grand to start my vendor again or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> there is something that I can claim during this type of situation. So I just wanted to come in there because, you know, uh, uh, when violence takes place, uh, it, 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 it we often forget the, the least counted uh, people uh, when you talk about money at some stage, uh, Chairperson. I just wanted to make that uh, uh, question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Kaiso. Is there other honorable member who would like to come? Okay, thank you. Let, 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 let's, let me come in and let me join the honorable members uh, 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 Thank uh, uh, Sasra uh, for the presentation, which is very illuminating. Uh, indeed, it is the first time we interact and the experience has been good. Um, just to add on the questions that the other members have raised. I'm just, I just want to check, aren't you allowed to go to the capital market and raise money? Um, that is being informed by this, this train that uh, uh, <clears throat> one knows that our fiscus is, 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 is facing, <clears throat> or is, is it just for um, <clears throat> your solvency cover ratio that you, uh, you are approaching us? Next question. Um, looking at your projections, for the next six months, you'll be able to meet all your, your claims. Um, so the question is, why must we entertain the, the request uh, within this special appro appro appropriation? I, I guess service will also have to, to, to come in there because when I looked at their projections is that until the end of this financial year, they will be able to meet all their claims. The, there's a year where you had a 1.5 billion rand loss. Uh, what was the event which led to that? Because I'm sure there is a, a there is a shock that perhaps happened around that time. I'm not very sure whether I I, I got it. Next question. Obvious, you you are a, a, a monopoly. I'm just checking. Um, have your monopoly been challenged? If so, by uh, by who and 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 what happened around that? Um, my next question. Uh, How much of the claims are coming from uh, uh, from the townships and rural and, and, and rural towns that were affected by uh, by the the unrest of of, of July twenty twenty one? And my last question will be: uh, What percentage of the business in the in the country would you say? Uh, a percentage of businesses in the country that are covered by 
uh, uh, by SASRA. Uh, your, your coverage ratio as far as businesses are, are, are concerned. And if, if you are able again to, to further disaggregate that, uh, also say what percentages of, of black businesses are covered uh, by, by SASRA. Uh, what informs that question is that uh, we are in the process of of trying to um, to transform the, the the economy, so it's always very important to know that. Uh, and again, if you are also able to disaggregate how many of those are, are women owned, how many of those are, are, are youth owned, and let me put this right immediately. If you are not able to provide that information now, uh, don't 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 try to. Uh, but you can always write back uh, 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 to, to to the committee. But those are the things that the committee is also interested in, so that we see that um, uh, our our companies uh, take uh, are, are conscious of our past that we come from and the need to transform the economy of this country. Then uh, back to you, uh, 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 Mr. Masondo. Thank you very thank you very much, Chair, and thank you to the members. So I will. Uh, answer most of the question and my colleagues will come in and support me. I think uh, the, the, there's, there's been a number of questions from the members about the penetration level to the SMEs, our awareness, and how many people are buying Sandra, especially in the townships who are SMEs. And, and let me start by saying this is one of the areas of lessons learned from our side. So we've learned that uh, Whilst we might have a product and, and the product it's easily available, it's distributed, but the, the financial literacy uh, becomes a, a, big, a big problem. Uh, one of the members said that he only knew about Saja when he was working in the insurance or when he was working in the financial sector. So financial literacy becomes a problem because for you to realize that Saja is so cheap and so affordable, you need to know that. That's one of the lessons that we've learned and we, we realized that uh, just having a product, it's not enough. And the members asked, what are we doing? So we are in the process of really looking at the, level, at the alternative distribution channel. Chair. So we currently distribute our product through insurance companies. And that is good in terms of the cost and also in terms, but in terms of penetration, um, it's, it, it becomes a challenge because we're dependent on the sales strategy of those insurance companies. If those insurance companies don't have the appetite to go to a particular place, then we, 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 we can't go to those places. Not because they, they force us, it's just that we, we depend on that. We are looking at how we can distribute this product using alternative distribution channel, whether it's Stockfell, it's associations, but also using technology. And this is something that we are busy working on it, and we are hoping that in the next financial year, uh, we will be able to go direct to those uh, small businesses and, and sell this product. And most of them, almost all of them, will find it uh, affordable, but we'll also give them the choice because currently, uh, the choice of just buying Sandra only, and, and that would really help them. We don't celebrate when we realize that people, especially in the township, that there was riots and people don't click. And I think this is something that we've always been worried uh, that we're not seeing massive of those claims. And, and I think that's what we are trying to do. How do we make sure that uh, we penetrate this one? We want to make sure that in future, if something similar this happen. Government don't have to have grants because almost everyone would have a, a SAJA. And those who would not have SAJA, it will be because of their choice, not because of other. So that's the first thing, Chair, that I want to, I want to, I want to acknowledge that it's something that we're gonna uh, work on it as part of the lessons for this, for this year. There was a question about why is the business big corporate uh, contribute bigger amounts? Is it because lack of penetration and so on? The, 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 the fact of the matter that the, we charge premium based on the values. So if you take just one, one, even just look at the state owned company, the values will be about 700 billion. And it will take, I mean, millions 
of small businesses, even to com if you combine the values of that. So just one state-owned company, we've got values of about 700 billion, and that generates a massive premium for us. But it's also big exposure because they have places and, and all over the country and they are exposed then to the business. And it also requires more capital. And whereas the small business, uh, you know, you can, we, with this exercise, we'll reach as much business as, as, as a, a small business, but the, the big corporate will still be being the biggest generator simply because of the values. And that's basically talks to the, to the shape of the economy and the distribution of the economy. So you asked the question about uh, the breakdown of our clients. We won't be able to, uh, to have that information and we'll come back to you with that information as to, but I must just say on the transformation issue, one of the sad reality about this thing, but uh, Jabrila was talking about the assets. We had assets almost uh, just under 10 billion. 54% of those assets were managed by Black business, when I say black business, these are 51% black owned and more than 35% female. So that's our, that's how uh, the board was, we really was serious about transformation. Out of that 21% was managed what we call, was in an incubator fund. These were the small business uh, that just didn't have much money. In some of cases, they were asset managers, highly skilled people, highly skilled women that were studying their own asset manager, but they didn't have money, so we, we've done well. So, and, and part of our, of our procurement plan was always that whilst we, we, we recognize the BE numbers, but we're also mindful that we want to promote the black owned, 51% black owned and 35%, and that was our strategy. So wherever we can, we, we, we did a lot just to, to support transformation number of initiatives that uh, members can go into our website, what we've done in terms of helping poor communities uh, just through our CSI and, and, and the profits that we've made, Chair, we've really used that money wisely to promote, uh, to promote uh, 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 development. And our main focus was education. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, with this event, it means that we'll have to cut on some of these issues. We've built schools all over the country, and we run this, uh, an external program which has produced more than 140 qualified actuaries, and, and so we've done quite a lot on, on this one. So, and I hope uh, uh, as we recover, we'll continue with those initiatives because they're quite important. We will be doing a lot of campaign going to the small areas, rural areas, township, and promote Sazia. And we hope we'll be able to use that accompanied by technology so that we can reach those people and we can make those people buy Sazia immediately. There's a question here about, uh, about loss ratio. Uh, I think, you know, the profits that we've made I mean, in an insurance environment, major your profit, your underwriting profit in a loss ratio. That's a percentage of claims to the, to the premium. All these years, we've been running an underwriting profit except in one year. That year was not a problem because we, are, we, we, we have an appetite that one in, in 10 years time will, will make an underwriting loss, but, and, but that was easily absorbed by our financial. So it did not require anything uh, for us to do anything. The capital was just enough and, and, and the loss was just the flip into the retained earnings and to our balance sheet. We didn't require that one. There was a question chair about the ombudsman, uh, complaints to the ombudsman. All insurance companies uh, are required to record complaints and present the complaints to the board and even to the regulators and insure clients have a right to go direct to the ombudsman and, and lay complaints for anything, either the poor service, uh, claims not being paid. And to the last ombudsman uh, indicates that we've been quite good in paying claims. We've had complaints to the ombudsman, but they are, we are the lowest, uh, one of the lowest 
uh, in terms of insurance company that people have laid complaints to the ombudsman pay 1000 so we got something like three uh, i mean six complaints per thousand so that's what just i mean so small but of course we we, we don't want to have any complaints we expect that we're going to have a increase in complaints in this financial year and mainly because of of service i mean we just this was overwhelming for us. We were never prepared to deal with such claims. And, and it took us time to put this in the, in the system so that we employ more people and train them. So it was just quite, um, and we expect clients to complain. And we encourage clients to complain because if clients complain, we can deal with those issues and so on. The, there was a question about the, the, the impact of the routes to the agri. And a couple of years ago, Chair, the farmers never put Saja, and, and and it was one of the uh, of the drive for us is to I mean farmers and miners, uh, the mining companies never put Saja, uh, but it was one of our of our drive during those uh, uh, set events that happens in the mines and that's happened in the farmers that we wanted to encourage the farmers to buy. So the product is available, uh, it does cover everything. Uh, stock, uh, but of course, this is an insurance. It depends whether the farmer had uh, had this product or not. And, and of course, uh, our focus is to pay those claims so that we don't, uh, in terms of food security, we we deal with uh, we, we don't threaten food security. The question here was about uh, uh, the profile of riots. Uh, I mean, compared to the other countries. We're quite unique, Chair, and, 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 and sometimes we should be proud of that. We, we expect riots every day in our country. And we're a democracy, and, and we expect that every day there will be riots. And in some cases, riots become violent and properties are damaged. And, and, and this is why we face the, the difference is the extent of riots, and, and, and that's the that's it a debate for future on this particular one. But uh, we, we expect even in future that there will be riots. And this is what we've cleared, that there will be riots. And almost every day, so almost every day there's riots, somebody is unhappy with something, and, and, and we expect riots. And otherwise, there will be no need for Saja if we expect that there will be no riots. However, Chair, I must be, we are dealing with uncertainty here. Uh, there are three major uncertainties. The ability for us to raise capital is a major uncertainty. The ability of us getting reinsurance, uh, that's, I mean, reinsurance plays a very important role in the modern insurance economy because reinsurance sits behind insurance companies. And if we, are, we, we have a problem, reinsurers are viewing the risk here bad, then it really, it really poses a major problem for us. And then of course, the last one is the, the uncertainty is what happened in July? Can it happen again? To what extent? So those are the issues that in our planning we're, we're, we're battling and, and trying to put a plan that deals with those uncertainties. So the profit share, we've been making profit and I think uh, I, I, I just uh, talk about that and, and the, the numbers are, are available. And the, the reason for the losses in 2021. So, I mean, so, so when the company was started uh, in 1979, most of the claims that we're paying were due to politics. Uh, and, and, and that's based on our history. And then we went through some level uh, stages in our, in our country where uh, we didn't get any claims. I mean, the claims were so small. And, and that, I mean, the country was doing well financially. And then in the, in the late 20, uh, 2010, we started seeing an increase in claims. And it was mainly labor disturbance, uh, strikes, and we, we started having strikes. It started with, uh, with the World Cup employees and, and so on. And we started seeing an, an, an increase in claims uh, as a result of strike. But in the last five years, that trend has changed completely. Most of the claims that we're getting now are what we call service delivery protest. Uh, this is what we call in the legal world, it's a civil commotion. 
So that's almost 70% of the claims that we're getting uh, as a result of that. And, and we are changing also our, 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 our underwriting and, 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 and of course, looking at how we can deal with this one. There was a question about uh, what does it mean, non-refusable, non-cancellable. So non-refusable, so insurance, by uh, they have a right. This is the most underwriting tool that the insurance use. If they don't want your risk, because they feel that uh, you're, you're quite a risky person or this particular portfolio is a risk, they just refuse you cover. So they can either exclude or they can just uh, not quote you a ridiculous premium or, or just not write this business. Uh, we, we don't have that luxury. And I think it's a good thing that it was built into our regulations because otherwise uh, we, we, we can't operate and behave like a normal insurance company that's driven by profits only. We can't refuse cover. And even if we see that the exposure is getting worse, we have to run. The last one, non-cancellable, we can't cancel even if you're a multi-claimant because if we cancel cover, who else is gonna write to us? There was a question about whether there is an appetite now for the private sector to write this business. I think Chair, the, the, there was never, since 1979, insurance company decided this is not the type of business they want to write. I mean, in good years, they might have been uh, believed that they can, they can write it, but in years where the, the country is challenged, insurance companies stay away from that one. So there's not really an appetite for, and even we look at the, at some stage we, we were, we asked in insurance companies whether they can be, uh, become our reinsurers because we wanted to offer them the slice of the reinsurance. There was really no interest from the insurance companies to reinsure us, even to take a big level. So there will always be an appetite in the London market, in the uh, European market, because that's the kind of business they write. Almost 99% of our insurers are, are over. The 3.9 billion, why do we need 3.9 billion chair? The, 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 the amount that is available for us to pay claims uh, in uh, feature the 3.9 billion. So we've built in then, if you look at the slide, the top part is the 3.9 billion. 3.9 billion will really, really help us because it makes us focus just on paying claims and not worry about cash flow. So the 3.9 billion that we that has been injected, where the claims are, will be mainly used for as a top up in terms of if there's a shortfall in terms of the claims. And if we don't use it all, it will be part of the recapitalization plan. But as it claims stands now, uh, the 3.9 billion will really be a top up. The SCR has dropped below 100. Uh, percent we are required by law once the SCR drops below 100 percent that you write to the regulator and inform the regulator that the SCR is dropped below 100 percent but not only just inform the regulator you need to present the plan to the regulator and demonstrate to the regulator your management action that you that you are putting in place and when do you expect that SCR to be above uh, 100 percent so our view uh, of course, we can't go into details on that application because it's still under the review of the regulator. But our view is that we should be back to, with that 3.9, and, and, and we should be back to 100% SCR in March next year, and, and, and so on. So the, the insurance company, chair, you, you can make profit, but you need the balance sheet because it's a requirement that's required by the regulator that Whilst you're making profit, we will move to profitability, but we need to have that capital that is acceptable because the regulator, the way they look at it is that whilst you're making profit, but you must also prepare for the worst case scenario. And we see what the worst case scenario uh, uh, means. Chair, you asked the question about whether the monopoly has been challenged. Our monopoly has never been challenged because this is quite a difficult risk, Chair. Very unpredictable. And if, if these things happen, it's massive and it's very difficult for the reinsurers. If you look over the years, Chair, we're sitting with the balance sheet that in many quarters we are accused of having a lazy balance sheet. So everyone will say, Sasha has got too much money. It's got, uh, you don't need to have a big balance sheet. 
But a company like Saja, you need to have that balance sheet. You need a shareholder who's not going to come every year and demand dividend. And, and, and so, so that's how the insurance company, they are insurers that support us. This is the business they write all over the world. And, and, and they also get the benefits of diversification in terms of, of capital. Uh, uh, on Chair, you asked the question whether can we raise the money in the money market? I think that's a discussion that we'll have with the National Treasurer. We're also mindful of the squeeze to the fiscals, and, 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 we, and, and we've always lived in our life that we will contribute to the fiscals through dividend. We'll never ask money from the board from the fiscals. But this is a discussion that we'll have, but the capital injection needs to happen because it's a big component of, of what needs to happen. We will look at alternatives with the National Treasurer on top, but the 3.9 billion chair, it's quite important that we get that 3.9 because it really gives us comfort. And I don't know uh, my colleagues whether I've missed any question chair before I hand it over to you or if there's any question that I've missed, but I thought I've answered all the questions. Chair, if I may as well, um, I think Cedric has covered a, a substantial amount of, of the questions, but you wanted to hear a perspective from the Treasury. So if I, if I may, uh, Chair, I think the, the 3.9 billion is not even the amount that um, Sasria brought to ourselves um, as the Treasury in terms of, of the support um, in July, the preliminary assessment was that they might need anything between 2.6 and 7.9 billion rands, um, especially if the claims um, exceed um, the 10 billion that they would have comfortably be able to, to deal with. So it was quite a, a thorough engagement, though be with limited data at the time. And I think Right now, Sastria is talking about 20 to 25 billion rands of claims. Uh, in the scenarios that we were looking at that time, Chair, they were talking about anything between 10 and 20. Um, so you can see that it, it is quite significant. So even the 3.9 billion in consideration, especially in light of the fiscal pressures that we are currently experiencing, um, you know, we thought that that could be a preliminary number that, that we put in, um, notwithstanding the fact that they did ask for more. And we have asked Sasria to look at other means to supplement um, whatever capital that they would require, one, to deal with the claims, but secondly, to make sure that the solvency cover ratio is at the level uh, where the regulator expects it to be. Or if it's not immediately there, there is a plan uh, for Sasria to be able to, to reach that level. We are continuing to have the, those engagements as more information uh, becomes available. And similar to members of this committee, uh, we would not want to see Sasria back uh, in this forum, but Sasria should be able to continue, be sustainable, look at their model, the tariffs they're charging, the extension to which they can grow that base um, so that they are able to on the strength of their balance sheet, be able to provide the services that they need to provide. So Chair, I will, I'll stop there um, at this point and um, hand back to yourself. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sepisa. Um, if, if I may check as CEO, there was a question which was asked by Honorable Sarupen, which was a very direct question. Uh, do you see yourselves coming back to the, uh, to the Committee for Recapitalization? Or you think with this uh, recap, um, <clears throat> proposed recapitalization, you'll be able to stand on your own? Yeah, I think that. So, yeah, thank you, Chair, and apologies for missing that question. I mean, Tepis have articulated well, the 3.9 billion will not be enough, and we will definitely need to come back to the committee uh, after the discussion with National Treasurer and also after we've explored other available uh, instruments uh, that's available in the world on how we can deal with this. So, so that will be guided on the final discussion with the, with 
with national treasure. But after that, uh, we, we, we hope the 3.9 and whatever we might, we might we need in future, we should never come to the committee again as a business because now we, we, we will, the lessons that you've learned and, and, and so on, and we're quite comfortable that what we've, what we've put in place already and we've taken into account even the, 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 a similar event of July, uh, right? So a business like Sazra Chair does not need capital injection uh, on a frequent basis. It's when there's a bleep, you need capital injection. But the business Sazra, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a well-established business model that can sustain on itself. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank, thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Masondo. Um, there was also a question um, which was also raised by the Parliamentary Budget Office yesterday in terms of, of, of timing. Um, do we need, looking at, I think I alluded to this, that if one was looking at your payment schedule um, for the next six months, you, you, are, you are quite comfortable. So the question was, why, why and I think it's, it's more to piece of there, why must it come with the, with the special appropriations? Maybe chair, before I allow to, in, in our calculation, we factored that 3.9. Uh, so we, we, we are hoping that that 3.9 will come anytime between November and, and January. So the 3.9 is factored uh, because of the increase in claims. So we definitely need that 3.9 as part of claims payment. Thanks, Chair. Chair, I think right now we're benefiting from, from hindsight. Um, and as you can see with the requirement, if it was put in the adjustment budget, uh, which normally is approved around January, it was going to be quite um, tight. But at the time of this um, special appropriation, uh, when it was being considered, um, the rate at which um, Sastria was going to be paying out um, claims was not known. Um, and there was a lot of uncertainty at that point in time. And that is why um, we put it through uh, in, with regard to the special appropriation, as opposed to waiting for um, the adjustment uh, budget that comes in uh, MTBPS. Thanks, Chair. Thank, thank you. All members, any, anyone who's uh, dying to pose uh, a question before I allow and, and the team to go and pay out the claims. I, well, I think, I think um, uh, one will take it that the, the, the questions and the presentations were, were loud and clear. And uh, thank, thank, thank you very much. But perhaps before um, I allow you to, to step off the platform, uh, one would like to make the following observations after our interaction. Uh, uh, number one, I think as, as, as a committee, we were satisfied that uh, the SASRA is financially sound and it will be able to pay all the claims which uh, they are legally bound to. So there is, there, is, there, is, there is no issue and there shouldn't be any rush uh, 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 to, to, to SASRA. Um, Sasra is in a very, very um, financially sound uh, 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 position. Um, and I think we also note that some of the reinsurers have paid Sasra upfront, and again, that helps Sasra with uh, liquidity. <clears throat> we also note that Sasra is growing and, 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 and continues to be profitable. And I think uh, what came out from, uh, from the committee uh, is the fact that uh, there, there are uh, SOCs out there which are run pro professionally uh, with, uh, with good governance uh, and uh, according to good uh, uh, business principle. <clears throat> so it is a, 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 a shining example. And I, I think uh, the, why they even come to us now it's because of the unexpected shock, which no one could have anticipated. Um, and the magnitude of, of the shock, as the, as the CEO was saying, that is, it's, it's ranked amongst 
the highest in the world uh, in the recent past. I think we also appreciate the fact that uh, Sasra is saying that uh, they are coming to us, not to ask money to pay salaries, but it's more about recapitalization so that they are in compliance amongst other things with uh, the requirements of the regulator, uh, this, the solvents cover ratio, uh, so that it should go back to acceptable uh, level, which is 100%. So we, we think that from where we are, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a company which uh, um, 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 must, must be supported. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, also uh, commend the board, the management, and everybody who's involved uh, in ensuring that uh, this company is able to do what it's supposed to do and is being run professionally. Perhaps as a, as, as a last thing, honorable members, it's just coincidentally that uh, uh, Mr. Masondo matriculated in the same school that I went to. Um, with those um, few words, um, I think let me allow um, Sasra and the uh, National Treasury, Sepiso, uh, you can go and uh, deal with other things, but we are a transparent committee if you so desire, you may you may remain with us uh, as we deal with other uh, matters in our in our agenda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. If there's anything uh, we 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 don't hesitate to write to you. And if there are things that perhaps you also want to uh, uh, bring to our attention through National Treasury, you may communicate and then we can uh, engage in the future. Obviously, we will definitely engage CEPISO with uh, SASRA in the future. So we will be uh, uh, looking as to how uh, they have performed uh, to try and deal with these uh, uh, issues. I think you're also taking note of the issues which were raised by, uh, uh, by the oral members as far as your penetration in the markets that you are not in to ensure that uh, we, uh, <clears throat> the project of, uh, of, of economic transformation and financial inclusion uh, is progressed. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Shabong. Shabong. Okay. Thank you, thank you, honorable members. Um, let me see where we go. Let's say, uh, let's deal with the, the, the minutes. This was the date. Honourable members, I refer you to the minutes of the first of September 21, 2021. Um, they were sent to us. Uh, let, let's let's see. Um, are there any? Chairperson. Yes, yes, Honourable Peters. The correction uh, of the name of uh, Madikali. Yes. Um, can you look at that? Uh, 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 Darren? Otherwise, I move. Okay. Honorable Peters uh, is, is moving for the uh, adoption of the minutes with those amendments. Um, seconder? I second with the amendments, Chair. Matafa. Thank you so much. Honorable Matafa is um, 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 seconding. Don't think there's any questions. Or can we? adopt the minutes of the 1st of September as a true reflection of that meeting. The minutes are, are, are therefore adopted. Any announcements from your side, uh, Darren? The person, uh, nothing really. We are still waiting on the offices of the house chairperson and uh, chief work yeah. uh, regarding the application for us to be permitted to be doing the participation. Yeah, um, uh, but let's... As far as the program is concerned, you are meeting on, on Tuesday. Chairperson, yes, that's as far as the program, but we have to wait for the, the approval. We'll, we'll, wait, we'll, we'll wait for the approval, honorable members. But if you are not told anything, 
but we will we'll definitely communicate with you. We, we have heard verbally that uh, um, we'll be given that um, right to finish with to finish the bill because we can't leave the bill uh, unfinished because immediately we come back in in November is MTBS. So it's very important. And the money is that we must appropriate here, uh, uh, agent money, which must deal with the issues that we have referred to. So it's very, it's, it's very imp imperative that we, we finish uh, the bill, uh, the SAP. But uh, further details around this will be communicated. Okay. Uh, Chairperson. Honorable Lenzana. Just, just one thing, it's, it's off uh, the formal meeting, but just a point of interest. Yes. I see Honorable Eric Murray uh, has been consistent. Just for us to know, how is he health-wise? Is he recuperating well? Yeah, okay. Thank, thank, thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Linda. Honorable Murray, you, you, please, you had, you had the question. You, Honorable Mare, are you there? Did you, hear, did you hear the question? Yeah, you are there. We are happy that he's back. Yeah, yeah. Honorable Mare. Okay, that's that's fine. I I think the the, the question will 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 stand. Um, it's it's more of a, a content from the oral members because he was not feeling well. Uh, but uh, he's now back. But thank, 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 thank you very much. Any other, me any other issue, honorable members? Okay. But uh, thank, thank you so much to to all of you. I think it, it was a, a an eye opener um, to to deal with um, uh, with us. Um, I think uh, even in future we'll engage with them. Honorable members. Uh, uh, the support staff and everybody who's on the platform, thank you very much. Uh, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Good luck thank with you, your questions, Chair. members. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you. Erin? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the communication from, from the house chair, hey? Yes, yes, I was, I was just trying to contact them to check. Out. By the way, on Tuesday, who are we meeting? Next Tuesday, it's... Uh, Departments. Social development next Tuesday, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Recording stopped.